Okay, uh, this is the third and final video about the project. Um, if you haven't seen the previous two videos, I would strongly recommend watching them. Uh, I've got I've made some updates here to my Excel file just to give you an idea of what I was talking about in previous videos. Um, but I thought something that might be good to do, and something that you do have to do for your project anyway, is uh, come up with a function based on what you see in the data. So here I have kind of an outline of what we're going to kind of end up with for this uh, this function. This is daylight, I'm calling it capital L, as a function of the day. So I want to be able to plug in a day of the year. So let's say, I, I don't know what day, like August 13th is. Let's say it's like day 197. Well, that's probably not right. It's probably like almost close to 200, 220 or something. And I would want to be able to plug in 220 here, or here for D, and the output of this function would be the hours of daylight uh, that I, I get for that day. That's the that's the goal. And so, um, what would we expect uh, our graph to like? What would we expect these variables to be? Well, A, we actually computed over here. Like we found the minimum amount of daylight in a day. Uh, for that was like on in these areas in this in these days in December, and then we found the maximum, which was in these days here in June, and we uh, subtracted them and divided by two, which gave us uh, this amplitude of um, 4.388. So we we would expect this to be like 4.3833. Eight, 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 three, three. We would expect the vertical shift because we already did that one too. That's where you add those two values and divide by two. We found the average of the two heights. We expect that to be about 12.233 uh, hours. Um, uh, the corresponds to hours. Then we expect we expect like the phase shift because we talked about this in the previous video that the winter solstice should be our minimum amount of daylight. And the minimum and the winter solstice happens uh, on December 21st. And so let's say that's 10 days. Uh, the phase shift would be 10 days. So we're going to put an, a, a 10 right here. It's going to be the day, like D minus 10. Or we're going to have X and Y when we actually do this. But So it would be like X minus 10. Uh, and then the omega, right? Uh, I, can't, I can't really type in omega, I don't think. So omega, if that if we get omega by taking uh, 2 pi, the fundamental period of either cosine or sine, and dividing it by what our observed period is. Well, we expect our period to be two, 365 days. Like today, October 2nd, a year from now on October 2nd, we should have nearly identical amount of daylight. Like that's how the sun works. Okay, so this should be 3, so omega would be 2 pi divided by 365. So what I'm going to do, and I'll show you what I've done on Desmos. I, I told you what you could do is put all 365 days and put them as data points. Well, I did that. And so uh, in Desmos, it looks like this. Like these black, these are all individual dots here. If, you zoom in, uh, if I zoom in close enough, you'll see. Uh, and then you can see also what I did is I did a regression there, and it came up with this value. Now something interesting here is that uh, these values don't really match up super well with what we had for our um, our these values. Like this would be end up being negative, so we should end up with a negative here. But if we go back, let me go back to Desmos. Uh, how can I show these side by side? Well, I'll put that there and put Desmos. Uh, put it here. So this 4.3833, and this is a four, but this is a little bit smaller. The the phase shift. The one this is kind of weird the way it does was it, it did a it ended up using a positive phase shift. I think if I use a minus, it'll be better. No, it still does a weird thing there. Um, the vertical shift twelve point one five seven also a little s shorter than what I have. And then if I if I look at what omega came up to be omega here w uh, is this. And if I want to see what is two pi over three sixty five, well two pi divided by three sixty five is 0.172 and this gave me a 0.167 now we know what this omega does to the function if it, omega is larger we have more like compression so we would have a shorter period we'd have a, a more narrow kind of you can think of it as like the spring has been smushed together a little more the higher the value there is and so we would expect a more smushed together curve than what has been 
uh, given to us by the sinusoidal regression. And so what maybe what we should do is see, well, what actually fits our data better? Is it what Desmos came up with? Or what about like what we did? So if we can, we can type in these values and just come up with our own function. So y equals, we're going to type in uh, the negative 4 point, this is straight off of Excel right now, 4.3833 times the cosine of uh, our omega was 2 pi divided by 365. And then we want to have x and then our subtract our, or we actually want to plus our phase shift over because we want to go 10 over. So I, was, I misspoke previously. And then I want to shift this up 12.233. 12 oh, so it's down up 12.233. Now let's make this like some other color. Let's make it like red. Okay. And so if we zoom in here, you can see, um, let me make Desmos bigger. And let me make the lines thicker. So, it, like, you can see, like, they're not far off. Like, all oh, these are all decimal differences that we have. But our function, the red one, is kind of matches up better right at the beginning, but then it falls off in this area. And then, like, the green one kind of, our, our red one matches this maximum better, but then the green one that Desmos came up with doesn't match, match the maximum as well. But probably Desmos... Desmos is one is a little bit better for like almost more days, whereas ours are better for the minimums and maximums. And so what could be the reason for this discrepancy? How come when we computed it based on the data, we got like a function that matches pretty good, but then also Desmos's function also seems to match pretty well. And like whose period is more accurate? Whose omega value is more accurate? These are all like the kinds of questions that you might want to ponder. Uh, when you talk about what you did for this um, and then you know like there's more to it and and those requirements are in another resource so uh, definitely check that out anyway this is the last video I'm gonna make on this project so um, hopefully you found this helpful uh, again if you get Excel situated where you have 1 through 365 and all the data points I would really actually encourage you to do it it's kind of it, it's gonna end up being a more natural computation because at the end of the day, if you're using 12 data points, and what what you're going to come up with as your uh, values in your sine regression and your sinusoidal regression are not going to be in day in terms of days. They're going to be in terms of months. So all your horizontal things, meaning like the phase shift, uh, well, the phase shift and the omega, are going to be like not. They're not going to like make sense in the context of plugging in a day. Uh, you'd be you'd be basically you'd be plugging in a month based on the numbers that these spit out. So something to consider. Um, and yeah, that's it. So uh, hopefully, you know, if you have any other questions about this project, send me an email, um, message me on, on a, a messaging app or something like that, or ask me in class. Uh, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe. Uh, hit the bell for notifications.